everybody welcome to my channel my name is Louisa I hope everybody's doing well I hope you're feeling happy and healthy and everything's good in your neck of the woods I'm loving this warm weather I just absolutely love summertime and I love flowers and nature because that's how I get my inspiration that's how I get inspired to make the piece that you're seeing me wear today I go out I look at the flowers I look at the leaves I look at the branches and that's how I get inspired and I also look at the colors that's very important and you know depending on the season you got to select the correct colors so for summer I like these kinds of colors for spring I like more pastels so it's a good idea to go out into your garden and check out your flowers I know some of you don't like to see scenery and music I'll show you that in the beginning of the video to show you a little piece of the process okay so that's part of my process and uh, that's what I do So today we're going to learn how to make this lovely necklace. Um, now I'm going to show you one of two ways. There are two ways to do it. You can do it with a frame or you can do it without a frame. Um, I didn't want this video to be difficult so I chose to do it with the frame. Now think of it in terms of using training wheels okay so when you're riding your bicycle as a kid you put on the training wheels and that's how you learn and then once you master it then you take the training wheels off and you take off so today we're going to learn how to make this necklace with the training wheels so to speak and then you can take them off and go for it when you get really good at it okay but the principle is the same whether you use a frame or not I just wanted to make a video that was easy to follow if you get to a point where you take the training wheels off and you can do it without a frame it opens up all kinds of possibilities but it is difficult it is very challenging because the number one rule with this kind of work is that you have to make sure that the wire is wrapped around either itself or around another piece of wire if that makes any sense in other words you can't have just a piece of wire with nothing wrapped around it because it's not strong enough so um, that's the reason why I'm having you uh, do this with a frame today but let me show you a uh, a necklace that I made not too long ago without the frame and um, I want to show you the possibilities and here's this beautiful piece you may have seen this one on Facebook and Instagram so this one is made without a frame and as you can see the possibilities are endless you can make the branches and the flowers go wherever you want uh, but like I said it's a little bit more challenging and once you get advanced and more proficient uh, with this technique you'll be able to do the same thing but I wanted to show you this to show you the possibilities and here's another work in progress okay this is made with some of the beads that Sarah gave me she was so kind to give me some beads when she visited the other day and look at this lovely piece I just love how it looks let me show you the back so that's what it looks like and all I need to do is attach some chain and this would make it a lovely piece as well so anyway guys uh, we're going to go ahead turn the camera around gather our materials and we'll get started okay, so for today's project we're going to be using two gauges we're going to use 18 gauge for the frame and we're going to use 24 gauge for wrapping the beads okay now if you're doing a version without the frame i normally step down a little bit and just use 22 gauge for the whole thing but because we're using a frame today um, and I want to make this tutorial easy on everybody um, I'm going to go ahead and use 24 gauge and as you can see I'm not really particular about any brand um, I do like to use non tarnishing if possible uh, that's what I you know usually go for when I do this kind of work but you could also use just straight copper and then um, if you know how to antique it yourself um, definitely do that it would look absolutely gorgeous all right so for the beads you're going to need um, various sizes and I have six millimeter crackle beads here as you can see different colors I have uh, these are actually little tiny rondelles they're about four millimeters I, I believe they are they're pretty small I got these on panda hall different colors and then I'm also going to try to incorporate some of these leaves and these are different tones of green uh, but you know whatever beads you have that's the nice thing about this necklace you can use whatever beads you have that are laying around that you want to 
use up and do something with. Let's go over the tools really quickly. Of course, you're going to need some flush cutters, some nylon coated pliers, some flat nose pliers, some round nose pliers. I like to use these little ones because it allows me to make small loops. And then I love these two for this kind of work. Um, this is a very thin um, needle nose plier that I use to grab wire and um, I can get into very uh, tight spaces with this. Same thing with this one. Now these are crimping pliers but I don't use the crimping uh, side of it. I use the tip which is very very thin as you can see. Plus they also grab really well for some reason. I think it's because of the material they're coated with. So these are the tools you'll be needing. And finally, you're going to need some chain and a lobster claw clasp and some jump rings. And I'm using five millimeter jump rings today. Okay, so before we get started, I wanted to show you uh, a close up of the necklace. This pendant piece here is only two and a half inches wide. Okay, so it's not very big at all. It's kind of on the dainty side for being a cluster necklace. And then as you can see, I built the chain um, using some rondelles and one larger six millimeter bead here. We're obviously not going to build the necklace the way I did it because it's very time consuming so that's why I want you to use chain but we are going to do this one component here okay so we'll do this six millimeter bead component and then we'll attach the chain uh, to the rest of the necklace. To begin you're going to cut yourself a 36 inch piece of 24 gauge wire. Okay so I have my 36 inch piece of uh, wire and this is going to be a little bit um, challenging guys because it's not going to all be in frame unfortunately but basically there are two ways to start okay sometimes I start in the middle of the wire depending on the design and sometimes I start on the end for the for this project we're going to start on the end and you're going to start about maybe six inches in all right so you're going to leave yourself this much of a tail and let's go ahead and start with a six millimeter bead all right so you're going to simply thread it on just like this okay and fold the wire just like this grab some pliers and I like to use these a lot grab it and very gently give it a little squeeze right there so that you can bring those wires really close to the bead. I don't know if you guys can see that. Once you do that, you can uh, grab your, your plies again and then very gently give it a little twist, okay? Now don't twist too much because if you twist too much, it will break the wire. And once you've got it going, then you can continue to twist, okay? And just uh, form like a little branch like this, okay? So that's one bead attached okay that's very easy now we're going to attach a cluster okay so there are different ways to do this I like to do clusters of three so I'm going to grab three of these rondelles just like this okay bring them down to where your work is okay here it is and now what we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to fold the wire just like this, okay? And to get it really tight, use your pliers. You could use your fingers, but I promise you, um, after a while, you will get you'll get calluses. So it's just easier to uh, use the pliers initially. But again, be careful because you don't want to shatter the beads and you don't want the wire to break and go ahead and begin the twist and once you've got the twist started then you can go ahead and use your fingers to twist it some more so now we have these two little branches with little well they're not flowers but they look like flowers on the end of each one okay now once you've got uh, two branches or three or however many you want then you're going to go ahead and continue to twist okay just like this so you end up with uh, this kind of a branchy design okay <laughs> it's very organic guys okay there's no right way or wrong way all right so now we're going to do another um, bead and I think this time I'm going to use a leaf so grab your leaf thread it through and I'm threading it through the other end obviously because this end is um, you know plugged up now you can't thread anything through that end and you can do two things you can either have it really close to 
the working branch or you can branch it out a little bit further away. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to be making our way down this wire. Okay. Wherever you see a piece of wire that's empty, that's what we're going to use to wrap around the frame. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the two wires together again, just like this. Give it a little squeeze with your pliers and then begin twisting gently and then finish twisting with your fingers. Okay, just like that. All right, so now we have this and we have the tail. All right, so now we're gonna continue and I'm gonna leave myself a little bit of space there. Okay, not too much. I'm leaving myself approximately half an inch, something like that, okay? Because I'm not going to put anything there. This is not going to have any wire twisted. This, this piece is going to twist itself around the frame, if that makes any sense. So again, let's grab some beads. And um, I think this time I'm going to do green rondelles or teal, teal colored rondelles three of them. I like to work in sets of three, but you can definitely do more than three if you want to. Bring them down to where the work is. Okay, all the way down. All right, so now I'm going to leave myself about half an inch. So I'm going to begin twisting a little bit further up in the, um, in the wire. And I'll start the twist. And continue twisting a few times okay just like that okay so this is what we have so far very simple let me do one more with you guys I think I'm gonna add another leaf bring it down to where the work is and this time I'm gonna have it really close to the main branch okay so give it a few twists so this is what we have just like this okay it's very simple all right so now we're going to continue I think I'll use a round bead this time to about here Bend the wire around it, okay, tighten it up by using your pliers, just like that, give it a little twist, and continue twisting, and this is what we have so far, okay very organic and I'm going to leave myself another little space and you know what I'm going to do let me introduce a different kind of bead just so that I can show you another technique these are really cute I love using flowers these are acrylic flowers and they're tiny but I want to show you how to attach one of these okay and you can get I think I got this on Amazon they were very, very reasonable. It's a huge bag. And what's nice about these is that you can use them uh, to make earrings. You can use them as bead caps. Okay, very cute. Now, if you are using flowers, you're gonna need some seed beads. And I'll show you why in a few seconds. And these are copper colored seed beads. Okay, 11-0. All right, so to attach a flower, it's a little bit different than the beads. Thread on one 11 seed bead. A flower just like this another 11 seed bead bring your work down to the main area where you're beading okay and now you're going to grab the wire and you're going to thread it back through the flower so you're not threading it through that seed bead you're going to thread it back through the flower and around the side of the other seed bead just like this Okay, you're not threading it through the seed bead. Pull it through, all the way through. Okay, so this is what it looks like. 
so that seed bead acts as a little stopper okay and then you're going to wind your wire around the back of the seed bead let me show you real quick what i mean by that okay so this is what you should have okay and just wind it around like this use your pliers if you have to it's a little tricky and I'll show you in just a second once I get it going all right so this is kind of what you want you want that seed bead in the back because that's going to stop the flower from sliding down okay um, I've done this before without that seed bead in the back and the flowers always end up sliding down the length of the wire okay so once you've got that um, as far down as you want and again use your pliers this is what it should look like okay and I love this it's so cute all right so at this point you can add another bead so let's go ahead and add this pink one fold it like this bring the wires together and then go ahead and give it a twist okay so once you've got that twisted you're onto this main piece of wire now so you can go ahead and twist both of them together as far down as you want and I'm going to leave a little bit of uh, bare wire there or single wire so that I can wrap that around the frame and I'm going to continue on my way to the next branch okay I'm going to do one more then I'm going to speed it up so that I don't take up too much of your time because um, I don't want the video to be too long okay so once again thread a bead on bring it down to where the work is fold it squash it and you can either use your fingers or you can use your pliers and then twist the whole thing and this is what you should have let me show you one more thing that's kind of cool to do with um, the little beads okay so I'm gonna grab five rondelles this time and I'm gonna make a little flower so each one of these rondelles will be a petal bring them down see this is what you should have and then make a little circle just like this okay and you could even add another bead in the center if you had smaller beads but you don't have to they look pretty just like that and then you do want to twist it Okay, just like this. See how cute that looks? All right, now I'm going to add another little branch here. So for this one, I think I'll use a leaf. And these are side drilled, by the way. They're easier to use with this kind of a design. Okay. twist it like this and when it reaches the junction right there grab both of them and twist that wire all the way down all right so as you can see uh, the whole section of that branch is uh, wired up okay all right so now I'm gonna continue moving along so I'm gonna leave a little gap here about half an inch or so and I'm going to start my next section and I'm going to speed up the video so it doesn't take too long
Okay, so this is what we have so far. As you can see, I've got all the beads um, wired and don't they look delicious? Oh my gosh, look at these beads. They This technique makes any bead look absolutely yummy. <laughs> I love I love how this looks I love the color mixture and I'm just always I've, I've always been attracted to um, rainbow mixes I just love them okay so let me go ahead and clear everything out and we'll get the 18 gauge wire and we'll continue okay so let's go ahead and start by cutting a four to five inch piece be generous so you don't have to struggle and the first thing we're going to do is to form a loop so you grab it at the end kink it just like this okay flip your pliers around and then wrap that short end around the top nose flip your pliers around again and continue wrapping towards the back so you this is what you should have okay and then I always grab another pair of pliers and a second pair and then I wrap that end around the main wire and because it's 18 gauge, you really don't need to wrap too many times, okay? One and a half to two times is really all you need. Once you have it wrapped, grab your flush cut cutters and snip it off. Okay, once you do that, make sure that you tuck in the sharp end, just squish it down. Okay, so this is what you should have, a very simple loop with one and a half to two wraps. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and start wrapping the piece that we just made. What we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this end, okay? So you wanna get it really close to the wraps where the loop is, okay? And then you're gonna grab this, uh, the 24 gauge wire and use pliers, because you're gonna wrap it, you're gonna wrap it over those wraps and the reason we're doing that, let's let's do one wrap underneath and now we're going to wrap over those wraps. The reason we're doing that is so that we can anchor the whole piece to the frame. Otherwise, it's going to slide around. And so then once you do that, continue wrapping around. Squish it down so that it's somewhat neat, which, you know, really doesn't matter because it's going to be covered up by beads. And then finish doing your wraps with whatever you have left. Push them together, okay, the best way you can. Snip off the excess and squish that down, okay. Now it's not going to be super, super neat, but that's okay. We just want to make sure that it's anchored properly and it's not going to go anywhere. Okay. That's that end, yeah, that end looks pretty good. All right, so then once you have that, then wherever you see a wire that is single without any coils on it, without any wraps on it, you're gonna go ahead and take your whole piece and wrap it around at least two times, okay? Because that's gonna anchor it onto the main frame. Just like that. Okay, and then continue. Now you can do more than two wraps depending on how long the uh, single wire is. Okay, and you can arrange it as you go down the length of the piece. Arrange your branches. You really can't go wrong with this, guys. This is super easy. Okay, I'm going a couple of times here. There's a longer piece there. And then... You want to end up a couple of wraps at the end as well. Just like this, okay? Once you have it attached, then you can arrange branches however you want to arrange them. Okay, it's that simple. Okay, all right, so now we have this piece here. We're going to hold on to that. 
because now we're going to form this loop here. Okay, so push around those pliers, get it up there real close, kink it, and form another loop. Give yourself one and a half to two wraps. Snip off the excess. Straighten out your loop if you need to. Okay, so now we're going to finish by wrapping this 24 gauge wire around and anchoring it onto the big wraps just like that okay wrap it around go back down and then snip off the excess smush it down and then straighten your loops if you need to and straighten the actual, not straighten, but form whatever shape you want, whether it's curved, moon shaped, whatever you want. Okay, now you do want those loops to be identical on both sides. Okay, move them around. It's kind of like a cluster piece pendant. But the nice thing about this, if you've ever made a cluster necklace, um, when you hold it up like this, the beads fall, whereas this, these don't. And so you never have to worry about showing chain or anything like that. So here it is, guys. Isn't that beautiful? Look how pretty that is. That is so beautiful. I love it. So now all you have to do is attach some, ch some chain. And we're, we're going to do something a little fancier than just chain, okay, to make it a little bit cuter. All right. And you will need your 24 gauge wire again. So snip off a couple of pieces about two to three inches long, something like that. And then grab a couple of six millimeter beads, any color will do. All right, and we're gonna attach them to the pendant. So you wanna do your, your loop just like before, okay? And before you wrap it, you want to attach it to one of the loops on the pendant. Okay, now we're using 24 gauge wire, but you certainly could use something heavier than that. A good gauge to use for this is 22, but since we have the 24 handy, I'm using 24 to demonstrate. Okay, and then just form your loops. And of course, you can do a few more with this wire because it's thinner. Okay. I generally don't do too many because I don't like a lot of wraps on my pieces. Squishing them down a little bit. And then thread on one of your six millimeter beads. Okay, just like that. And now we're going to form another loop but we're not going to close it up with wraps because I'm going to attach the chain to this. Alright so I'm going to leave it like this so we don't have to use any jump rings. Now you could do more of more beads along the necklace like I did in my in this version here. Okay I started with a six millimeter and then I added some smaller rondelles up the rest of the necklace. You could do that if you wanted to. Okay, but this is just as pretty. So I'm going to do the other side and I'll be right back. All right, so I've attached the other one on the other end and I'm going to measure my piece now because I want to make a 16 inch choker length necklace and my piece is about approximately three inches. So that means I need to um, get myself the difference between 16 and three, which is 13. So that means I need to get myself two pieces of chain that are six and a half inches long. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Here's my chain and now I'm going to attach one end to this bead here. So you simply thread it on just like this. 
push the uh, chain into the loop like that okay and then grab it with a pair of pliers and do a couple of wraps two to three wraps probably three because this wire is thinner I usually do a few more wraps when it's thinner okay and then snip off the excess sometimes it's just easier to take it off the plier tuck it in okay and we're going to attach a jump ring at one end might as well get this done since it doesn't take too long just like that for those of you who are begin beginners okay I know a lot of you are advanced and you already know how to do all this all right and now we're going to go to this other end and attach the other piece of chain to the loop just like before do your couple of wraps snip off the excess tuck in the sharp end okay and so now we're going to attach this jump ring to this end and the lobster claw clasp close up your jump ring and you're done and of course if you're giving this to somebody I do recommend that you do an extension chain so that in case they want to wear it longer but look how pretty this is I didn't even use um, beads up that necklace and it looks beautiful I love this it's gorgeous front or back it doesn't matter it's really pretty I love it all right guys um, let me put a necklace on and I'll be right back to say goodbye I still think this is my favorite out of all the floral necklaces I've made I love this one and this one was made with a bargain bee box for June so um, I just love how this one turned out and it got a lot of attention on social media by the way if you do decide to do one of my designs I would be very very flattered and if you decide to post it on uh, social media please consider giving Misty Moon Designs credit. I'd really, really appreciate that. Uh, you can even direct them to my YouTube channel, uh, help grow my channel. That would be really, really nice. And of course, you can always send me your photos. You know, I always love to see what you do with my designs. All right, guys, um, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope I've inspired you. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.